Hi, welcome to my today's classroom. In my today's classroom, I will be discussing about a very common disorder which is known as gastric paresis and another very common disorder which is known as chronic intestinal pseudo obstruction. These are the motility related disorders. Now whenever a patient is presenting with chronic type of pseudo obstruction of intestine or whenever a patient is presenting with gastroparesis how that patient will present to a physician. Now these patients present in the different way little bit different way to irritable bowel syndrome and functional dyspepsia. In case of gastroparesis and chronic pseudo intestinal obstruction these patients they present with features of nausea, vomiting, Sometimes they present with belching, bloating sensation, fullness in epigastrium. They will present with features of reflux phenomena. They will present with features of west generalized vesting. Just as in a case of malnutrition, in case of malabsorption syndrome, there is generalized vesting. So these patients may present with generalized vesting. They may present with features of dehydration. They will present with features of multiple vitamin deficiencies with night blindness because of vitamin A deficiency. They will present with features of vitamin B12 deficiency. So overall, they will present with def deficiency of different nutrients. They may present with features of dehydration like orthostatic hypotension. They will present with features of uh, features of uh, deficiency of vitamin B12 which affects the spinal cord. So overall different deficiencies are present in these patients of gastroparesis and pseudo intestinal obstruction. Now whenever a patient is presenting with features and you want to rule out this gastroparesis and pseudo obstruction, first thing is that in history you rule out different disorders which are associated with these features. The most common one is diabetes mellitus. So diabetes mellitus, if it is present, it should be controlled in a proper way. Usually features of gastroparesis in uncontrolled diabetes develops after about 10 to 12 years of detection of diabetes. So diabetes mellitus is one of the cause of gastroparesis. Another causes of gastroparesis includes scleroderma. This is a rheumatologic disorder gastro, of gastroparesis, scleroderma. So if scleroderma is present, it may cause gastroparesis. Even in rheumatoid arthritis, in Jogren's syndrome, and in, in vasculite, different vasculitis syndromes, you can get patients of gastroparesis and chronic pseudo-intestinal obstruction. Then after some surgical procedures, after abdominal surgery, any type of abdominal surgery, if the gastric bypass is done or even, if, even after bariatric surgery for obesity, in these patients, they may develop gastroparesis and <coughs> chronic pseudo-intestinal obstruction. Endocrinal disorders like hypothyroidism, again there in hyperthyroidism and hypothyroidism, patient may present with gastroparesis and even chronic pseudo obstruction of intestine. So overall whenever a patient is presenting with these two disorders that is gastroparesis and pseudo intestinal obstruction one must rule out from history one by one the connective tissue disorders, diabetes and hormonal disorders like uh, hypothyroidism. Even in Cushing's disease, this in the, in the Cushing's disease patient may present with gastroparesis and chronic pseudo-intestinal obstruction. Always rule out history of any abdominal surgery. After abdominal surgery, for many days sometimes patient may have chronic pseudo-intestinal obstruction. Apart from this, if patient is on some medications like antiarrhythmic drugs, on antihypertensives, on anti-diabetic drugs, on other drugs which are decreasing motility of intestine. In these cases also sometimes patient may present with uh, this chronic pseudo-intestinal obstruction, obstruction type of features and gastroparesis. So these various disorders must be ruled out in history whenever a patient is presenting with such type of features of gastroparesis and pseudo-intestinal, chronic pseudo-intestinal obstruction. 
The chronic pseudo-intestinal obstruction may have a similar features like that of a subacute and acute intestinal obstruction. So it should be worked up properly because in this is this is disorder of motility and any organic cause must be ruled out from the history. <coughs> Now, whenever a patient is presenting with gastroparesis and chronic, chronic pseudo obstruction of intestine, that is known as CIPO, S C I P O, chronic intestinal pseudo obstruction. So, what are these two conditions? One is gastroparesis. Now, gastroparesis is a condition in which normal contractions of stomach they get disturbed their motility is disturbed it is slowed down that is known as gastroparesis gastric emptying time is delayed this is known as gastroparesis now if if you want to understand about the motility of stomach in short i will tell you how this motility of stomach is controlled in this motility of stomach is controlled by both parasympathetic system and sympathetic system of body now this parasympathetic system and sympathetic system both arise from the spinal cord and they supply the stomach in the stomach there are two plexuses one is submucosal plexus which is known as plexus of Meissner and other one is mitric plexus this is orbex plexus so these two plexus are now network of nerves these are network this is network of nerves so these are the this is the local nervous system of stomach and intestine now these these net, net, networks these networks of nervous system in stomach and intestine they are in connection with sympathetic and parasympathetic submucosal is in connection with sympathetic while mitric plexus that is orbex plexus is controlled by both sympathetic and parasympathetic system apart from this in intestine and stomach there in stomach mainly there are certain cells which are known as interstitial cells of kajal these interstitial cells of kajal this is the pacemaker of stomach from this pacemaker impulses arise and they create motility in the stomach now these impulses they arise three cycles per second the rate of rate of these impulses is three cycles per second they are distributed in the fundic region of stomach now these cycles three cycles per second these this this these uh, these, uh, these so these, these movements which are, are which are, are originating from the pacemakers of stomach they control motility of the stomach mmc that is multiple motor contractions these multiple motor contractions they arise in three phases in first phase after meals when patient takes meals in first phase about 45 to 50 contractions per second are present in the second phase in the second phase contractions are randomized type of contractions that is sometimes contractions occur and sometimes they the, the stomach is silent this is randomized type of contractions then comes phase 3 in which contractions are very fast they are rapid so these three types of contractions are produced by MMC that is multiple motor contractions of the stomach these are classified into three phases so as the patient consumes meal when patient takes food material it goes in stomach first first as it goes in stomach the normal impulse which is originating from the pacemaker cells it remains silent in this particular phase fundus will relax diaphragmatic muscles will relax and antral muscles the region in the region of antrum those muscles will slightly contract so this all is controlled by parasympathetic and sympathetic system which is supplying the stomach after meals in the first phase the contractions will gradually start in the antral region there are slow contractions in the antral regions which gradually spreads to randomized type of contraction on in phase 2 and in phase 3 there are rapid contractions so the slow contractions of first phase 40 to 45 
per minute and then comes randomized contractions they remain for about 5 to for about 40 45 minutes again and fast contractions remain for 5 to 15 minutes so in these three different phases there is churning of food material in stomach and the churning effect is more from the it more it is more in the antral region and then the antral region will relax at the end and food material is passed down through the pyloric opening into the duodenum so in this way the gastric the gastric movements they propel the food material forwards now whenever a patient is presenting with gastroparesis this particular phase phase 1 phase 2 and phase 3 these all phases are prolonged they are prolonged and the movements are diminished the cycles per second movement which are originating from the cardiac pace from the sorry from the gastric pacemaker these gastric pacemaker gastric pacemakers which are present in the pundic and the cardiac region they are also known as cardiac pacemakers so when they arise from that region the the number of cycles are three cycles per second but in the gastroparesis these cycles are decreased so in gastroparesis overall the autonomic system of the stomach is affected and the gastric pacemakers which are also known as cardiac pacemakers which are situated in the cardia of stomach the, these are also affected then comes intestinal chronic intestinal pseudo obstruction in chronic intestinal pseudo obstruction there is intermittent contractions of the small bowel segment and large bowel segment and these contractions relax by themselves when the contraction is sudden that is just like a spasmodic contraction when there is a sudden contraction there is intestinal obstruction and this is known as intestinal pseudo obstruction this will remain for some times and then relieved by itself but it will produce symptoms which are very similar to acute intestinal and subacute intestinal obstruction. So whenever these patients of gastroparesis and chronic intestinal pseudo obstruction, they, uh, they come to the OPDs, to physicians and, uh, and gastroenterologists, proper workup have to be done. So in the proper workup, first thing which is to be done is to see for any organic cause for this you will have to do endoscopy both upper GI and lower GI endoscopy and in both these endoscopies will you will rule out the organic cause apart from this ultrasound of abdomen to see any organic cause CT scan of abdomen and MRI of abdomen this is to be done to rule out any organic cause in these investigations when we do these investigations it is seen that the transit time transit time is increased if barium if barium studies are done transit time is increased gastric emptying time is increased transit time through small bowel is increased through colon it is increased so overall the transit time is increased so the first investigation which is to be done is radiological in which barium follow through should be done USG of abdomen is to be done, sonography of abdomen, CT scan of abdomen, MRI of abdomen. In simple plain x-ray of abdomen, you can see distended abdomen with gases. In case of gastroparesis, while in case of chronic pseudo-intestinal obstruction, multiple fluid levels can be seen in small bowel and even in large bowel in chronic pseudo-intestinal obstruction. So first, rule out the organic cause. And if there is no organic cause, then you will label it as a case of chronic pseudo-intestinal obstruction or gastroparesis. Now, the second thing is study of motility, of emptying time of stomach and intestine. This is done with the help of scintigraphy. In scintigraphy, radio label food material is given and then with the help of gamma cameras, the scanning is done and emptying time, gastric emptying time and intestinal emptying time is measured. Apart from this, nowadays electrogastrography study is done. In this electrogastrography studies, the complexes are seen, that is 
the complexes which are originating from gastric pacemakers of the cardia region and fundic region these are gastric complexes are uh, are traced out in the similar way as that of ecg and in the region of antrum again the electrical activity is measured by with the help of electrogastrography another recent investigation is wireless capsular study in the wireless capsular study a capsule is given orally and then that capsule moves down to the stomach duodenum jejunum ileum and colon and small intestine and there we will come to know about the transit time with the help of this wireless capsular motility study we can we can measure the gastric appetite time we can measure the the the, the movement and the movements peristaltic movements at the level of esophagus at the level of stomach at the level of antrum and in intestine we can also measure ph of stomach ph of intestine and that of colon so this study wireless capsular study is again very helpful in deciding about the motility of uh, stomach as well as intestine apart from this various various hormones should be measured in case of gastroparesis proper blood sugar should be evaluated in the case of gastroparesis apart from this how to treat a patient of this gastroparesis and patient of uh, chronic pseudo intestinal obstruction whenever a patient reaches with gastroparesis and you have labeled it as a case of gastroparesis first thing is that you control if diabetes is present you control that diabetes if thyroid hormone is there is up and down in thyroid hormone you have to correct it and correct any other any other feature like electrolyte imbalance and then you go to the lifestyle modification and dietary modification in the same way as that of the irritable bowel syndrome so first thing is you will have to correct the abnormality which is precipitating this gastroparesis and chronic pseudo intestinal obstruction and then you go for lifestyle modification and dietary modification apart from this you can use in the second step prokinetic agents these prokinetic agents will help a lot in these cases probiotics will help in the cases of gastroparesis and in the cases of chronic pseudo intestinal obstruction so one by one you will have to correct all these things apart from this you will have to correct vitamin deficiency any deficiency which is causing weakness of the body you will have to correct wasting of body by giving pro pro proper protein diet so this is all about this gastroparesis and chronic pseudo intestinal obstruction thank you